Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Saturday the 1st of October and it's day 13 of 2016 on the allotment. <laughs> it's been a little while since you've seen a video from me. I, I look back and it was uh, back in August, uh, the last time I made one, when Pete came over. What I want to look at first is my potatoes because I, I needed to get lots of potatoes ready uh, to put on the show bench for our show. And uh, for those that don't know, I, I was growing international kidney, I was growing kestrel, I was growing nadine, and I've also got uh, growing the sharp O'Meara. Now I haven't pulled any of the sharp O'Meara yet, but just getting ready for the show, uh, I needed to pull up the international kidney uh, because we have a salad potatoes category. I need to pull the kestrel for the coloured potatoes category and also the nadine for the white potatoes. Now I was growing with the buckets that are the 35 litre buckets and so what I was doing was putting um, about 3-4 inches of ancient 10 year old horse manure in the bottom. Then I was putting two potatoes and then I was putting another 3-4 inches of horse manure Then I was putting two more potatoes at um, the opposite corners to a square. Then I was putting three inches more but then what I did is I filled everything up with wood chips. And so to see how that's worked, well, you can see that um, the first thing to do is to take off the wood chips. Now the wood chips acted as a mulch to keep the weeds down, but you can see that I'm actually pulling out potatoes as well, because potatoes, as long as they're covered from uh, the, 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 the sun, they won't go green. And they had all the nutrients uh, in the soil at the bottom, and so they uh, they they grew up on the stems, and uh, potatoes started to form. So the first task was to get rid of the wood chips because I don't really want to mix the wood chips in with the horse manure because that's when you you, you suck all the, the nitrogen out of the soil, and I want to use this soil uh, as a potting soil for next year. Once I had got all of the uh, wood chips off, then it was a case of emptying it up and uh, you can see there that uh, we started to get some decent potatoes. These are the international kidney. Now I grew my potatoes on a tarpaulin. I didn't actually bury the buckets down into the soil and because of that, and I think you can see that I'm actually getting some quite small potatoes, but I have to tell you that they taste gorgeous. International Kidney, if you've never grown them before, um, they're, they're the Jersey Royals that you see in the shops. They are one of the best tasting potatoes. When they're small, like I've got, uh, they're quite a waxy potato and they, they are the ultimate salad potato. But if they grow a little bit bigger, and they start to get sort of like handful size, they actually become quite flowery. Um, they've still got that beautiful punchy potato-y taste, um, but then they become actually quite good for roast potatoes. So they do have lots of uses depending on how you grow them and how long you grow them for. If we can see the reveals that I did of the, the, the buckets that we have, we had two of those, and I was really, really pleased. Uh, that you know, they may not be the massive yields that other people have got, but you know, considering how I was growing them uh, on top of the tarpaulin, uh, that that does me absolutely, really, fantastically well. What I've subsequently done, because light gets through the tarpaulin, and weeds will be growing underneath that tarpaulin. So what I've subsequently done, as I've got time, is uh, to put more wood chips down. And so that area now is completely blank from the sun. It's had a year um, of uh, you know, not being rained on. Uh, admittedly, where the tarpaulin is, the, the pressure of the rain will have gone through to that. But I'm hoping that now that wood chips are there, as we go through winter, that that will mean that all weeds die off and so that uh, the soil gradually becomes um, more textured with all the, 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 the castings from the earthworms that move in. So that then what I'm hoping to do is to take the tarpaulin off, 
put the wood chips back and have a really, really fabulous bed next year for what's actually going to be uh, my beans. I may also put uh, some manure down as well as I did last year. Uh, I've got to be really canny about beans this year because I've had two failures on the trot. But back to the potatoes. So the next ones that I looked at were the kestrel and I emptied three of the buckets of kestrel and you can see there that I'm, I'm actually getting you know, quite good yields. Again, they're not huge, but I have to tell you kestrel again is a beautiful tasting potato. Um, it may actually be one of the best potatoes I've ever tasted. And they also are really good for show because they've got a quite pale skin, but they've got these beautiful um, purple red blotches on that I mean when you clean them up uh, with a sponge and put them on the show bench they look stunning and uh, that these ones actually won me first prize in that category but we'll talk about that another time <laughs> we're still eating those and this is over a month later so that that is absolutely plenty for us i've got to come to some kind of um, way to measure this because i think i may have actually grown more potatoes than uh, we can physically uh, uh, cope with this year but we can give some away as well so uh, that'll be nice for our neighbors so then moving on from the kestrel the variety of white potatoes that I grew this year was Nadine. Now everybody says that Winston's are the white potatoes to grow for the show bench but the issue with Winston's that I've heard is that the taste doesn't really match up to how pretty they are. Whereas with Nadine, and I can wholeheartedly recommend this, I mean they're beautiful, they're round, uh, little ovals and they taste gorgeous. Whereas the kestrel, I mean you can do pretty much anything to them except serve them as a salad potato. Uh, the nadine are really really good um, if you want to make uh, wedges in the oven and they're brilliant as uh, boiled potatoes uh, to have uh, with dinner and we've also had them roasted and whilst they're quite a waxy potato um, they're, they're, they've got a really nice smooth taste and they do roast. It's a different type of roasty uh, to the kestrel which is quite a floury potato. <laughs> So those are the potatoes that I've grown this year. I haven't got to the Sharpo Miri yet, but I will do. And uh, when I do, I'll show you. So having done that, I'm now ready to show you the rest of the plot. <laughs> you can see that my rhubarb is really dying back now for the year. Um, it's actually held up a lot better this year than it did last year. I mean, I've still got stalks there. I'm not picking it anymore. Uh, there are probably worse stalks that I could pick, but uh, this has uh, died right back. Now, what I want to do is, once it has died back, I want to um, get out this grass and uh, put wood chips all around this area to suppress the grass, because there are some you know, horrible grasses in there that just sort of don't look good, and uh, I think I can make this a lot neater. So uh, it's uh, going to be a bit of a, uh, a new regime for Cheeky, um, as he looks after the um, the rhubarb patch that I've got here but it's been brilliant all year and uh, I, I'm not sure when I need to split this rhubarb because it's just been wonderful each year I've done it they say that when it starts to get a bit spindly that's the time to uh, split it so uh, I'll look out for that next year well this is the area where my onions were growing and there's still a good uh, set of wood chips down on here but you can see that the mare's tails come through um, I've got some other perennial weeds that I need to pull out so that there's some, some work to do here but overall I mean considering that this has just been left um, it keeps proving the point that wood chips helps with weeds if you don't like weeding use wood chips I certainly will well here's my little frame that I built and uh, this should have been absolutely full of beans but uh, beans this year have been absolutely rubbish for me. They were rubbish last year. And what I've got to do is I've got to stop them being eaten, uh, not by slugs, uh, but by deer and potentially badgers and also rabbits. So uh, next year what I'm going to be doing is wrapping these wigwams with fleece with the seedlings um, in the ground. 
so that uh, they can grow up unmolested until they get to a decent height when hopefully that means I'll get some beans. But what that has meant is that all these trombuccinos that Roland sent me have done absolutely brilliantly. This is not one of the big ones. I've just pulled this off the vine. Now, this weighs an absolute truckload and uh, <laughs> isn't that a beauty? So, uh, Roland and the Trombocinos, these have been magnificent. I'm going to start to clear these now and uh, it's almost going to be ready to uh, start putting garlic in for next year. We've already got the wood chips down and I'm convinced that it was the wood chips that stopped the area getting waterlogged. So I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be a good year for Solent White next year as well. If Ian Nocton's watching this, can you think of a suitable comment, Ian? Because I think this is one of the biggest. <laughs> now that of course is my pumpkin for this year. I've only got one pumpkin, but it is a beauty. Now of course that shot, it could be any size that you think um, it doesn't really do it justice. This is an absolute beauty. Um, it's certainly going to be a challenge to lift it. It's certainly going to need a wheelbarrow. But what an absolute beauty that is. Definitely, I think we've got the, uh, the centrepiece in the village for Halloween this year. And uh, that makes me really happy because I think the kids will enjoy uh, gathering around this as we put this outside the door when they come trick or treating. Now, today is the last day to measure the trombocinos for Roland's competition. Now that is certainly a contender. What is absolutely blowing me away here is that I thought there was only two on here and there's damn hundreds of them. Here's another. Absolute stonker that one. Here's another one. This one's been draping on the ground a bit. It hasn't rotted through, but I think if I left it there too much longer it would have done. Okay, that's the last of them from this one. So now I've just got to go through the rest. <laughs> so here are all my tromboncinos for this year. That is a really amazing harvest. This one here is 38 inches long. It's got a five inch diameter and a massive 16 and a half inches circumference at uh, its widest point. Now I haven't weighed it yet, but it is an absolute stonker. This was grown outdoors I couldn't be happier and I really want to grow these again because I think they're amazing vegetables to grow. That is my trombocino. <laughs> it's not the only one though, I mean we've got some uh, really interesting shapes and sizes here. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that I could carry all of them. They're amazing. This was another contender for a big one, but uh, the angle of the dangle wasn't quite right and the other one beat it both in girth as well. But I think it's safe to say that these trombocinos <laughs> were an absolute success. So that's the look around. As you can see, I've got quite a bit of work to do. 
I've always got quite a bit of work to do, but uh, my time away from the plot has not damaged it too much. I've managed to get some of the grass trimmed down so that uh, the weeds are not going to be quite so stubborn. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to be getting cracking on is to turn the rest of these beds into back to Eden beds because I'm absolutely sold on this technique for gardening. <laughs> So I will be making another video as I show you uh, how we're getting on with that. I tend not to make videos if all I'm doing is you know, sort of like lumping manure and lumping wood chips around because I can't think of anything more boring than watching me pushing a wheelbarrow. But uh, when I've got something to show, I will make another video and I'll, I'll show you how we're getting on then. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.